Hi there, I wanted to go over an interesting project I was working on the other day. This is a project for my brother, who's an artist. And the idea was to create a, uh, a board with a whole bunch of holes, almost went all the way through the board. And they wanted them in an array, and they wanted the board so you could stack them beside each other, vertically or horizontally. And the, the, uh, the all the holes would line up on the line. And it was an interesting thing we came up with against with this when we tried to uh, pocket out the holes and we were getting all kinds of uh, grief in, in that uh, it was the Z axis kept going up and down up and down it was just ridiculous so let me go over this and we learned a few things it was kind of cool so I'm in uh, V carve now the size of our wood is 18 by 36 inches and it's a three-quarter inch piece of MDF and so uh, that's fine we say okay now, what he wanted was a whole bunch of holes. And he wanted them 0.875 inches in diameter. So there's a hole. And uh, so what he wanted was an array of these. And uh, what we figured out, so I'm just going to select that. We wanted an array of them. We wanted 25 rows and 11 columns and we wanted them spaced 1.375 inches in offset so that's from one edge to the next and with the size of this that leaves uh, and half an inch in between each so I'm just going to say copy and that gives us a whole lot of those on the screen there so you see the distance between them is a half an inch so now I'm going to want a board. So first I'm going to take all those welders selected there. And I'll center them on my piece of wood. So now that's perfectly centered within there. And we wanted uh, these boards to be able to be lined up beside each other. So what I'm going to want to do is make a box around the outside that's a quarter of an inch off each of these. So when you take it and you multiply it out, you end up with a rectangle and I happen to add. It's nice that Vectric remembers the last size you used. So I'm just going to create that and take that and we'll just center that on everything as well. So that gives us something that's there's a quarter of an inch there, quarter inch there, half an inch between. So now if I take two of these boards and I'll cut out along that pink line there, take two of those and line them up side by side or top and bottom they'll all just fit together and all the holes will line up. His idea is to fill these with uh, epoxy in various colors and then grind it away and end up with an interesting pattern. So we had this project. There's our basic design for it. And uh, so we took all these holes. I'm just going to take the, uh, the holes now. Now our idea was, obviously, we're pocketing out these holes. The wood is 0.75 inches thick, so we're going to pocket it to 0.7 inches. It leaves us 50 thou. So you go pocket, and there's our depth, 0.7 inches. We have a half inch end mill. And uh, we're just going to do conventional. And uh, so everything there is set. We calculate out our pocket. And then around the outside, we're going to do a profile cut. So we just take a, prof a profile. Here we go. And uh, we can do this in four passes or three. But uh, we're going to go around the outside of that. So, and that will cut the uh, the piece of wood out. And we're also going to go to 0.7 inches. Now the idea being, he needed to ship these boards. So this outside layer will stay attached and then you can go around with a table saw cut it off and then go around with a, uh, a handheld router and just trim off that little bit of extra stuff around the outside so it's a sort of convenient way to cut it it's accurate with the CNC it's accurate to where these holes are but it lets them transport this wood around so great everything is going great and uh, Let's have a look then at this pocket. I'm going to save it as a toolpath here. 
and uh, it's the pocket. Save it. It's called Pocket One. Now I'm going to go to my file manager there. There's our file. I'm going to open it in Notepad. That's something interesting. So here's the stuff at the top that Vector creates. And then here it tells it to switch to use an end mill. It's all set to go. Here's the pocket now. So it, it's an X and a Y move to the location of, well, I guess to my home location. Then it's a move to the start of the first hole at a height of 0.2 inches, and that's our safe height. Then it goes down minus 0.233 inches. Great. Then it does four arcs. So that's cutting out one hole and it, to a depth of 0.233. Then, this is the part that was driving me crazy, it goes up to the safe height and immediately back down to the height of my, the depth of my second hole, or the second cut I want to do. Does the same four arcs. Then, up to 0.2 and down to 0.7 and does the hole. Then finally it goes up and moves to a new location and starts it. So what we have here is that and that is just completely wasted moves. Like right one after another a Z up and a Z down. Z up, Z down. So when we did this, what I did was uh, I'm using Notepad++ here. It's a really great program. So what, what we had done is made a macro. You can go in here and you can start recording. So what I did was, uh, and, and luckily all of the holes are exactly the same throughout this whole thing. And this is 5200 lines of going up and not down, but all kinds of extra Z motion right there. So what we did, so this is, what there is here is there's a Z I, I want to delete, Z I want to delete, then I want to keep that one. Because that's moving us to the new location. Then there's another Z that I want to delete, and delete. So I did a macro where I went in, deleted that line, down, 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 deleted that line, then skipped the one I wanted, and then went down to that one. I don't know if that's clear. But anyway, it was a great big pain. Okay, so we weren't happy with uh, all those extra Z movements, and then uh, so we ended up deleting them out by hand. But uh, then what I figured out later was I'm just going to go in here and I'm going to delete that pocket profile to the path. Now we've got all those holes selected. Instead of doing a pocket, what if we do a profile tool path, but we cut inside all these circles? Because these circles are 0.875 and our bit is 0.5, we can just do an inside profile cut and it'll behave the same way. And I wanted to see what the difference would be. So let's see here. Let's take a, a profile on all those circles and we're going to do it in uh, three passes. And so that's how many times it's going to go down in depth. And we're going to do these inside. So we're going inside our circle and we will so we'll call this circles. Profile. Calculate that tool path. Now we can see them all in there. We still have our outside path and we have all these other ones here. Now, one thing that's interesting is that uh, even in, I've tried the, the simulation, when you, you simulate this, you can see there, there's our three depths and everything, and when you say go, you don't see, no matter how you slow this down, you do not see the Z movement in there. It's just, so it's, the simulation is kind of nice, but not fantastic, and there's our, all our holes.
So let's take those circles and save that toolpath. There's the one we had before, and there's the circles one. Let's go back and have a look at that in our editor. Uh, open the circles profile. Now, we look in here, you can see here's the toolpath starting, moving to the right location, going down in depth, doing the four quadrants, and then it looks just simply moves down and does the four quadrants and moves down and does the four quadrants then moves up moves to the new location and moves down so this is exactly the toolpath we were looking for and this is what we ended up editing the other file for so this is an interesting thing here's the first one with our extra Z motion this is 5251 lines doing it this way 4,701 lines. So we're saving 500 lines of uh, G code. So that's, that's a much, much more efficient, better way to do it. So those circles, uh, you doing it with a profile has turned out to be a much, much more efficient way to do it. And so that's really what I wanted to cover today. So it was an interesting project. Was sort of how we laid it out, the thinking that we did about getting the spacing and the way we cut around the outside here. It's smaller, it's, we, uh, we have this extra wood around the outside so my brother could transport these, but also so we, we cut a hole around the outside that's almost to the depth of uh, uh, through the wood, but leaves a bit so that we could trim it off by hand. And then the inside, you would think these would be a bunch of pockets, but it is far more efficient to do it as a bunch of profile cuts. And we can do that because the size of our bit would cover the whole inside of that hole. And I know that if you ask the, uh, the electric people why they, uh, the pocket cuts work that way, while always going up, it's just because a pocket cut can be, as I understand it, it's a pocket can be quite complex. And so you really need to move up before you carry on, and it just in order to cover every eventuality. But it really seems to me that if you're writing uh, the software that, that you see a Z move up and a Z move down like that, one after another with no X and Y motion, it's very obvious you can get rid of that first Z cut. That's a trivial optimization. It's the kind of thing uh, uh, computer compiler should be able to detect and, and get rid of. So, so I understand why they're doing it. I don't think they should be doing it. And that's the, the project that we ended up with. And I'll include at the end of the video some shots of uh, what the project ended up looking like.